Guan Yu was once hailed as Liu Wei's finest and as an absolute must pull. But is that still true? I'll tell you in the next 30 seconds. She is one of the strongest cryo on field DPS units in the game. She can decimate single targets or large groups of enemies, support your characters, and she is very easy to build. Melt is her nastiest source of damage. On the other hand, Ganyu is best built with limited sets of artifacts. Her playstyle might feel redundant and repetitive, and her constellations are pretty much a scam. So is she still a must pull? To be frank, there haven't been many changes to herself, but the game itself has changed a lot. So in this video, we will get to the bottom of it and find out if she is still the GOAT. I'm Juice, and that was The Spice. Now, let's get nerdy. Ganyu is oftentimes compared to Ayaka, who is heralded to be the sole challenger to Ganyu's throne of the top cryo DPS. However, their damage outputs are actually rather similar, competing very closely with one another. Why don't we put this to the test? Here, I will be equipping Ganyu with an R1 Aqua Simulacra and four-piece Shiminawa's Reminiscent set with the teammates Bennett, Nihita, and Kazuha, her Burning Melt team. This will also allow us to use Ganyu's Burst. As for Ayaka, she will be equipped with an R1 Misplitter on two-piece Shiminawa's and two-piece Gladiators in her strongest freeze team, Mona, Kazuha, and Shenhe, to allow for maximum burst damage. Now, let's enjoy the showcase. Analyze, shall we? Ayaka managed to burst down the boss within 14 seconds, whereas Ganyu cleared it in 18. If we take a look at this spreadsheet, you can see Ayaka on her own dealt a total of 447k personal damage, while her support still 79k of the team's overall damage, adding up to 606k. Whereas Ganyu dealt 448k personal damage, and then with the 111k from her teammates, she dealt 559k overall. This is because Ayaka's damage is highly front-loaded, whereas Ganyu's DPS is more sustained and consistent. In a scenario where the combat is more long and drawn out, Ganyu would have the advantage. Considering how her charge attack is not crowned either, this means her performance could be even further improved against Ayaka's main source of damage, her burst, which is crowned. Ayaka also played more of a hyper carry role, whereas Ganyu's supports were able to contribute solid DPS on their own. Ganyu's supports overall contributed 111k extra damage, meanwhile Ayaka's contributed only 79k extra damage. This is because Ayaka's supports were more geared towards buffing Ayaka's burst, whereas supports such as Ben and Nihita by nature are very high value in terms of damage output. Kazuha also had the ability to swirl Pyro, which vastly increased his contributions in Ganyu's team compared to Ayaka's. Even so, Ganyu's personal DPS was slightly higher than Ayaka's, but was still dealt over a longer period of time. When it comes to their teammates, Nihita is present to provide Ganyu with an elemental mastery buff when she is melting on field, and also sustaining Pyro application through burning. Bennett to apply the initial Pyro aura and buff Ganyu's attack, and Kazuha to swirl the cryo output and also simultaneously take advantage of Bennett's self apply Pyro Aura to swirl the element within his burst, the element taking priority over others. The team-wide Pyro application is enough to allow Ganyu to melt even when she utilizes her elemental burst. She is equipped with an R1 Aqua Simulacra, her second best weapon when it comes to melt comps, and she is equipped with a 4-piece Wanderer's Troop set. Her talents are at 8, 3, 8. Ayaka, on the other hand, is equipped with her best in slot, the Misplitter at R1, to compete with Ganyu Simulacra, and is on a 2-piece, two 2-piece two attack percent set. Mona is there to apply her omen buff to largely boost Ayaka's burst damage, Kazuha to apply 4-piece Viridus and Venerer to decrease the enemy's cryo resistance, Shenhe to boost Ayaka's burst damage, reduce the cryo resistance of the boss, while also buffing Ayaka's attack stat to match up with Bennett's buffing on Ganyu's side. She has an advantage with her talents being 8-8-10. Eight, eight, Plus, Ganyu's performance here can be considered quite impressive, as her charge attack was only level 8 here, and her burst was also only level 8. Ayaka's main source of damage, her burst, was crowned, meaning that she had an advantage. She also had an advantage as Miss Splitter is Ayaka's undisputed best in slot, whereas Aqua Simulacra is Ganyu's second best meld weapon, not her first, which would be Hunter's Path. 
This simply proves how it depends on the conditions of your equipment, set, and investment levels onto your support characters, and which support you have available in order for either one to deal the highest DPS. Overall, under similar conditions when given similar quality and investments, they can deal about roughly the same amount of damage per rotation, depending on the scenario. Ghani's rotations are simply longer and are more beneficial in extended combat scenarios, while Ayaka's are faster, requiring further downtime management skills as consequence, and her rotations are much snappier. In contrast, Ghani's team simply takes longer to set up, which allows for a larger window for team contributions to factor in and extends the rotation duration. It is simply the player's choice. Ghani's burst allow for the rest of the team to perform amplified reactions, meanwhile Ayaka only had access to Swirl, as Freeze's void against bosses, and Ayaka's team was mostly focused on solely her burst, whereas Ganyu portioned her damage out with her burst, charge attacks, and a small yet noteworthy explosion from her elemental skill. Generally both similar in their high quality performances, with both of their teams being able to contribute a solid amount of damage, even if their supports are not intended to deal solid amounts of damage. To this day, the mandal of the strongest cryo DPS unit is shared between two characters, Ganyu and Ayaka. Both are cold-blooded killers, it just depends on how you want to do it. Quick, devastating nuclear damage because you love to be merciful to your enemies, or steady shotgun blast of Ganyu is what makes you tick. Ganyu can be played in many different ways, and the most well-known one is as an AoE damage dealer in Morgana Freeze comps. Morgana has always been heralded as one of Ganyu's most well-known teams, regarded highly for its insane AoE capabilities. It also has zero energy issues due to Ganyu's cheap 60 burst cost and Venti's passive restoring 15 flat energy to the element's world when his quadratic scaling burst, which would be Cryo. This also synergizes greatly with Ganyu's need for an Animo Gripper to hit all enemies with their charge attack level 2 frost flake arrow, dealing immense AoE damage on top of the icicle shards coming down from Ganyu's burst. However, she has wonderful flexibility, being able to be utilized with other cheap freeze units, such as Diona and Sucrose, while still dealing damage to great effect. Plus, one of her best weapons in this team is Prototype Crescent, and the four-piece Blizzard Strayer set, both incredibly free-to-play friendly due to the nature of their availability and stat sticks. You can also play Ganyu within Melt comps, proving her flexibility for her ability to deal with bosses easily, despite her main strength being in AoE scenarios. Here, she would take most of the time on fields because of the way her damage is dealt through her charged attacks, applying Cryo without any ICD on top of the Pyro application put on by the team's Pyro applicator, which could even be covered by a free 4-star unit like Shang Ling, or could even be a rare case to use Dia if you so choose. This style is perfect for facing bosses because you don't even have to worry about anyone else hitting your Ganyu, and since you will be focusing on one target, most of the damage will be poured into the health of the bar of the boss itself, taking full advantage of the melt reaction and the nature of the way you must play Ganyu within this team. Up close and personal, do note that you will need a shielder to properly utilize this team comp effectively. Lastly, Ganyu can also be used as a support. She can be placed in a mono cryo team as support for Ayaka. However, Ganyu would take most of the field time here because of her charged attacks, and Ayaka would not mind that, since her burst is her main source of her damage. She would release it and let Ganyu do the rest. In such a team, when, when you combine the damage from Ganyu's charged attacks and Ayaka's burst, you would get a number in the boundaries of 400 to 700k. Aside from how flexible Ganyu is as a unit, she is extremely easy to build, which is one of the main reasons why she's praised to be a particularly cheap unit. Her ascension materials are easy to farm as well. Ganyu is also incredibly flexible when it comes to her artifact set choices and weapon choices. Her best 4 star weapon options are craftables and provide a clear upgrade path through refinements of them. She synergizes brilliantly with a multitude of 5 star weapons, even the support related ones, such as Elegy for a burst support Ganyu, meaning that any 5 star bow you have will be able to find a use on her on any of her given team comps, each having different varying levels of effectiveness depending on her team archetype, and is always an upgrade over the already brilliant 4 star options regardless of archetype. Her artifact set choices are all cheap and affordable and are highly interchangeable. Both of her best sets are farmable within the strong box and side grade sets are usually available either as 2 piece 2 piece sets as placeholders or are available in highly resident efficient domains. For example, you can replace 4 piece Wanderer's Troop with 4 piece Suminawa's Reminiscence until you can complete a full 4 piece Wanderer's set. She is also able to be more flexible with her main stats depending on team comp, and can also have substats more easily poured into offense as her energy recharge requirements are low, along with her own self-sufficient supply of crit rate. 
Ganya's power comes from her high melt synergy, but results from her ICD. You see, Ganya's no ICD on her charge attacks, no ICD on her elemental skill, and a standard ICD on her burst. Therefore, in a standard melt team, Ganya will be paired with Bennett, Changling, and Zhongli, and she would literally smack anyone. The reason why Ganyu's charge shots are her main source of damage is not only due to the bloom of the frost arrow, but also because they have no ICD. So with the proper pyro application, each charge shot from Ganyu would hit like a truck filled up to the brim with fireworks. Luckily, Bennett and Shangling have that area covered, and Zhongli is just there for the good vibes and to provide protection. Because if you don't cover Ganyu in this combo, then you risk taking a lot of damage. While Ganyu is indeed highly flexible in terms of equipment, that does not mean all of her equipment is highly preferred. Two-piece two-piece sets such as two-piece blizzard strayer, two-piece attack percent, and two-piece noblesse for burst damage percent can all be used as replacement sets within her mono cryo and freeze team archetypes, but they are considered vastly weaker than a simple four-piece blizzard strayer set. Since like the four-piece noblesse on support Ganyu may be beneficial for the team, but she cannot snapshot this value onto her own burst. She also does not utilize four-piece emblem of severed fate that well due to her energy recharge requirements being naturally so low. This means that support Ganyu truly has no dedicated artifact set. Melt Ganyu has plenty of alternatives, though four-piece Shimanawas is considered to have many flaws in comparison to four-piece wanderers, such as the weaker two-piece in Melt and the energy stealing, and other sets are completely obsolete in random sets that players would typically not have. For example, 4-piece Lava Walker, 4-piece Rechasing Bolide, 4-piece Gilded Dreams can all be used on Melt Ganyu. But why? There is no incentive to farm these domains that are strong boxable, or to place newer, more highly contested sets that are only slightly better than a 2-piece 2-piece variant on Ganyu, meaning that there is no point in obtaining these pieces over Wanderer's Troop, her Melt Best in slot. It would be a waste of resin in every sense of the word, and can falsely make one assume that Ganyu sets are more flexible than they really are. It is undeniable she has many choices, but these are not all convenient or good choices. You have to admit, sometimes it gets a little boring to just throw Bennett and Changling's bursts, put on Zhongli's shield, and hit the enemies of charge attacks over and over. It might not be a bad thing, but if you think that you might get a dynamic and engaging gameplay experience from running Ganyu in a standard freeze team, then you might be disappointed. Though it is worth noting that Ganyu has gotten new playstyles over the patches that may appeal to more players, and they're often overlooked. For example, Ganyu is a support within fridge teams, or more modern interpretations of her older archetypes, such as Ganyu, Bennett, Nihita, Kazuha, Melt. This team allows Ganyu to use her burst while melting her shots, which provides a unique and fresh way to utilize this tried and true playstyle. In fridge teams, a newer team that has risen with Dendro's presence, she can be utilized as a burst support to produce more cores of her cryo application. However, her main playstyle will always be simple compared to most units nowadays, and if these qualities of her kit still bore you, then perhaps she may not be your ideal unit. Ganyu's kit is essentially complete at C0, and there isn't really much of an incentive to go and pull for the rest of her constellations, which mostly provide irrelevant buffs to the character, and the majority do not apply to each one of her team archetypes, meaning that you may not be drawing out the full value of both your money and your Ganyu. Though, it is worth mentioning that while our constellations may be low value, they aren't entirely useless. Ganyu C1 is a rather splendid constellation compared to the C1 of many characters, and her C6 is nothing to scoff at either. However, she suffers from a similar problem to Shao, where her C2 to 5 aren't really worth going for individually, meaning you either dip the card in a little, or you go all the way and become what you were supposed to defeat. A Leviathan. I know, this may seem like bad news for any whales out there looking to swipe, but at, le at least it isn't completely bad, since at least her C6 holds decent value. I was meant this wine tastes the same as I remember. Overall, Ganyu has remained a consistent DPS at his age like fine Osmanthus wine throughout Genshin's time. She may have fallen off in terms of meta pull value, though she is still highly potent and a brilliant consideration to pick up if you're looking for a universal multitasking cryo DPS. This has been Juice, signing out, and I wish you all a pleasant day. See you around. <laughs>